social media side. Okay, good morning, everyone on social media. Praise God. Those of you that chimed in and saying, where's the audio? No audio, no audio. Yeah, well, we do that on purpose. Amen. I know you've gotten accustomed to listening to Facebook, but I need you to start going to the radio station, okay, so you can hear it. All right. Uh, my favorite scripture, you, got, you all know what my scripture is. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and Philippians chapter 4. Praise God. So we're going to go there this morning. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, do not do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Praise God. So our hearts and minds are going to be guarded Praise God. Protected. So you you know what? We, we, we said uh, perfect love casting out fear. Well, we're already, our minds and hearts are already guarded. Praise God. By God. Amen. Isn't that a good thing to know? So fear is not even an option for us because we're already guarded. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God is upon us. Because that's what the scripture said. Amen? Amen. So don't y'all go around here with that, that that misnomer of, you know, saints got fear. No, you don't. Your heart is guarded. Your mind is guarded. And you have the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. It's yours. Amen. We thank and praise God at this time. Are we getting ready to go into prayer? Amen. And Pastor Fulbright is going to open us up in prayer. Praise God and lead us to the throne. Let's all together call upon the name of the Lord. Pastor Fulbright. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Father God, we thank you. That is one, one faith. One love. One baptism. One God. We thank you that you are the God of the worlds. Mm. We thank you that you are the almighty God. And Father, we come this morning not to thank you so much for yesterday, but to thank you for a new day. Mm. We come before you because your word has already came and said, lean not. On your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge, and you shall direct our prayer. So we come in here to say thank you for that word. Thank mm. you, Lord. Thank you for that word that just instructed us as to what to do as we come in. Mm. Then we see your word that tells us that you are the almighty God. As you was telling Abraham, you are the almighty God. Therefore, walk before me perfect. Mm. So we come and say, thank you for you making us perfect. Because your word shows us that without you, we can't do nothing. So we thank you for your word. We thank you for the life that is in your word just already, God. You're already quickening our spirits as we come before you just to say thank you. Yes. Mm, but now, Lord, we, you, your spirit is leading us to come into the courts. Mm. And so, therefore, we're praising you, God. We're praising you for the fact that, that you keep telling us to come. Mm. We give you praise because we look at ourselves because your word now says you are fearfully 
and wonderfully made. Mm. Lord, we say thank you. We praise you. We say hallelujah for you making and forming us in this flesh. Mm. And you place your spirit that you created us in into this flesh. This flesh that cannot save us. This flesh that cannot do for us. And so therefore we thank you for being born again. And that we're yes. not of the flesh, but we're of the spirit. Mm. So we can enter in. <laughs> Hallelujah that we can enter in because we're not in the flesh. We're in the spirit, God. Thank you. Oh, so we come before you in this day just to say thank you that our awesome God, the almighty God, is mindful of us. We, we, Lord, you are mindful of us that you found us worthy to allow your son to die for us so that we could have relationship with you. That we can say, not my God, but we can say, my father, our father. Oh, Lord, that caused us to bow. That caused us to put our head down but extend our hands to you to say we recognize your awesomeness being with us already this morning. I thank you for Bishop Horn. I thank you for Evangelist Kurt. Lord, I thank you for Bishop Jones. I thank you for <laughs> Pastor <laughs> Newton, God. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. Lord. I thank you for this group of men that you have assembled, God. That they would not lean on their own understanding. Mm. But, but they would they would trust you, Lord. They would trust you to word their mouth this morning. That they're gonna they're gonna trust you, Lord, to order their steps this morning. And not just them, but Lord, to the, all of those who are listening, God, to your people who are called by your name, are your blessing in a new day. Mm. Lord, I thank you for knowing as Bishop Horner said, you have not given us the spirit of fear. Mm. But when this spirit of fear comes, Lord, I thank you that you tell us to be encouraged. You tell us to be courageous. So therefore, we thank you again for your word. For you told us to be strong. To not be dismayed, to be encouraged. I got higher. You told us to be not dismayed, God. We're not going to walk around in this day wondering what's going on because we know that you got everything in your hands. Yes, mm. yes Lord. Yes, Lord. We know that there's going to be life given today. Mm. And there's going to be death given today. Mm. But Lord, I thank you that you gave us choice. We don't have to accept the death. Mm. We can cast the death down. We can, can stand and not declare from our authority. But Lord, we're able to say, the Lord God rebukes you. So, Father, mm, as we come into your presence today, we come in as an empty cup mm, that's needing to be filled. Fill us with that Holy Ghost. Fill us with your, with your love. Fill us, Lord, with your peace. Fill us, Lord, with your goodness. Fill us, Lord, with meekness that our cup overflows. And Lord, allow us not to be wasteful, but Lord, let us find others. Let us, even if it's in our minds, Lord, let us think on others that, Lord, they can receive this overflow this morning. Because mm, we come in too, Lord, thanking you that you not made us.
priests. We represent the people, God. We don't come in here just on our own being thankful just for us, our family. No, we're not going to be like the rich man who only thought about his father and who only thought about his brothers. But, Lord, we come in thanking you for the world. God, we thank you for your people over in Germany. We thank you for the people that's in, in, in China. We thank you for the people that's in North and South Korea. We thank you for the people in Russia. We thank you for the people in Australia. We thank you for the people in the UK. We thank you for the people in Africa and South ah, America. Yeah, I, I, we I, thank I, you for the people that's in Canada, God. And we thank you for this nation the United States, because God, I thank you, even though because it looked like it's going one way, God, you still have a rudiment. As you told Elijah, I got 7,000 others that has not bowed to me. So God, I thank you for the rudiment that you have, God. In this side, I thank you that you have made them to be the salt that put some flavor to the nastiness of this world. So God, in this day, we want to be bold. We want to mm, not seek our own life, but Lord, seek the life that you have given us, God. So for Lord, we see your word that says, if you seek to save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you shall gain it. So Lord, let us have the heart and the spirit to lose our life on this side of life that we might gain it. Thank you for your word says this. You shall know that you have eternal life because you believe my record. Mm. So Lord, we hear your word again saying, who has believed my report? Mm. And Lord, we thank you by shouting hallelujah and saying, I do, Lord. I believe your record. I trust your every command. So lead us in your precepts. Lead us in your statutes. Lead us in your judgment. Mm. So this is my prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. Man, Evangelist Kirk. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 yes, Lord. Great is the Lord, and greatly is he to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Father, we come before you right now, Lord God. As your children, Lord God, we humble ourselves before you, Father God. Hallelujah. Father, we ask, Father God, for you to forgive us for anything that we have said or done to have offended you in any kind of way. Father, forgive us for speaking evil of anyone. Father, forgive us for presumptuous sins father god forgive us for dwelling on thoughts contrary to your word to your will and to your way father god forgive us lord god for not exercising our spiritual senses lord you said in your word beloved try every spirit and see that they be of god god yes lord help us to be more discerning of god between good and evil because be of that which is true and of that which is of deception let us not be deceived nor let us walk in deception father god because jesus you knew no guile you knew no guile hallelujah help us to walk up right before you hallelujah Ooh. To love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life is of the world and not of the Father. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. 
God, in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord God, to be about your business. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Help us, Lord God, to set our affections on those things above and not on the things that are on this earth. For we are dead and our life is hidden. Christ in God. Help us to be mindful of the purpose of oh God. Your purpose, Lord God, to be, be fulfilled in our life. Because, oh God, it is you that is working in us both the will and to do of your good pleasure. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, bless your people with strength today. Bless your people to overcome evil with good. Bless us, Lord God, hallelujah, to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Open our eyes to see as you want us to see. Open our ears to hear as you want us to hear. Father God, word our mouths as to what you would have us to say as leaders in the body of Christ. Father God, put a watch at our mouth not to say anything, Lord God, that would be contrary to your word, to your will, and to your way. And do not speak death with our tongues, but to speak life. Because there's death and life in the power of tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. We want to eat the fruit of life. From the tree of life, Father God. Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, God. Have your way with your people today. Oh, God, instruct us and lead us and guide us with your eye. Hallelujah. Hmm. Praise your Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty are your acts. And we have yet to see your greatness and your power. Da! Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We want to see your greatness and we want to see your power even more. Ooh. This is verily, verily, I say unto you, the works that I do shall you do also and greater works shall you do. Why? Because I go into the Father. Mm, I thank you, Father God, for those greater works. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, for those powerful testimonies that are coming forth even now, Lord God, because of the obedience to the Spirit of God. Who have a praying spirit. Hallelujah. And have denied themselves. And come before your throne room. Hallelujah. Your word says if you abide in me and my word abide in you. You shall ask whatever you will. It shall be done for you. So I thank you Father God. That the fervent effectual prayers of a righteous man. Availeth much. And those that have. Praise God. Deny themselves and come before your throne room and have called upon you, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, that your word says, hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face. I thank you in this hour, Lord, there are many that are seeking your face. You said, seek my face while I may be found. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Father God, that many are crying out to you. Hallelujah. Father, we ask for you to forgive us, Lord God, of our sins. And to lead us and guide us and direct us. To do your will, not our will, but to do your will and not to let a day go by that when we don't say, our Father, which art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> praise God. We thank and praise God for Evangelist Richard Kirk, Pastor Fulbright. Praise God for bringing us through the throne of grace. Amen. And we thank and praise God for God. I am so thankful. With thanksgiving, I come to him and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for all that you do. Everything that you do for me, I'm so grateful for it. Amen. And Hallelujah. you know what? I'm grateful because I'm healthy. Amen. I am so grateful that he protected and covered me, my family. And I, what I mean by family, I mean by my body of Christ family. I haven't received a report of anyone within our body that has gotten this virus, you know? At least I haven't received Hallelujah. a report, okay? And I thank God for that. Praise God. Now, it's a lot of other things that's been transpiring in our body, but it hasn't been that, you know? But uh, I thank and praise God for the body of Christ. You, you all keep the faith. Keep on standing on the faith. Amen. God is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. He's still on the throne. And I, I, that's what makes me proud. I'm proud to be a believer. Because we have a great, powerful, mighty God. Amen. And I'm so grateful for you. We thank and praise God for you that has that joined us here in prayer. And we're praying that you continue to pray with us and for us here at KBRG. Uh, and we just want to just say, give God the glory. Give him the Hallelujah. praise and give him, just give it to him. Give it to him. Don't give up. Okay. So we thank God for all of you that has joined us this, this morning. And I am, man, I'm having a good time in the Lord right here. Praise God. Because of the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And uh, they said, Bishop, are you going to church? I go to church all day, every day. That's right. Right here. That's right. Where I am right now. Amen. I'm at church all day, every day. Praise God. Uh, our church decides that our church made the decision not to assemble, which is fine. You know, we watch on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube. We watch our church service. Our pastor is the only one who attends the, and a few others. No more than six people attend. And this church seats about uh, 2,000 people. So can you imagine that? You know, and 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 to, to not be able to see at least 1,000 to 700 people in the building, praise God. I guess it's not messing with him. He's good with it, you know, because, uh, you know, you don't have to wear That's less hands he has to shake. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he... <laughs> He, he he's eighty he's eighty eight years old, y'all, and he's still pushing. You know, eighty eight, eighty eight, eighty nine. He's still pushing, amen. And I thank God for him. Uh, so if uh, for those of you that listen in, those of you over at at the church, praise God that do go with Pastor. Uh. Uh, we just say blessings to all of you that are listening in. Praise God that follow this radio station. Praise God. We just want to say uh, good morning to Park Avenue. Praise God Church. Amen. And uh, Pastor Campbell. And uh, we want him to just, you know, just be encouraged, y'all. It's going to be over in a minute, okay? And may God bless you. May God keep you. For all of our listeners, for all of our churches that are partners here at Radio KBRG, uh, we enjoy your services online. 
Praise God. But I can't wait till this thing lifts, till God blows it out of the atmosphere so we can, my wife and I can come in and join you in your services. Praise God. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Park Avenue, we're going to visit with you as soon as it, it, it lifts. Amen. Also, uh, uh, Williams, Park Avenue is a, a historical Baptist church. So is uh, Williams Chapel Church in Oakland. Historical Baptist church. We're going to be visiting with you. Praise God. Deliverance Missionary Baptist Church. We're going to be visiting with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And every church that we've came in contact with in Oakland, we're going to be trying, we're going to do our best to visit with you. Pastor Brandon, we're going to visit with you. Praise God. And uh, uh, Apostle Garrison, we're going to visit with Judah the Gathering. Praise God. We're going to visit with you. Praise God. When we go to Las Vegas, praise God. We're going to visit with Fresh Wind. Praise God. So we're going to drop in on you guys. So uh, uh, to say, Thank you, Jesus. We're going to praise God with you. Praise God. Okay. And new beginnings, we're going to see you. Of course, you know we're going to see you. Praise God. And uh, we're going to come and see all of you. Praise God. Yeah, that's going to be our goal, to reach out to every ministry that we've come in contact with. So uh, God bless you. We got to go. And may you have a wonderful rest of the day. Don't forget, AM Coffee Talk will be on at 7.30 this morning praise god i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna put my i'm gonna park mm -hmm. and pump my brakes uh i know i've been getting pretty pretty strong on the am coffee talk but uh i just want to let you know that uh we are kingdom children we belong to the kingdom Hallelujah. and uh i'm not talking about to the church y'all i'm talking about to the kingdom it's a difference amen so uh uh, those of you who say, I'm part of the church. That's good. But I represent the kingdom of God. Amen. Because church can be defined in a whole lot of different ways. But uh, we thank you, praise God, for you. And uh, we ask you to continue to pray for us uh, that when we bring about this kingdom, we're going to talk about kingdom and we're going to talk about leadership. Godly leadership, godly kingdomship. Amen. Both. Uh, we're going to bring in some people uh, men and women of God that teach leadership, biblical Christian leadership. We're going to bring them in. Amen. They're going to come in and talk to us a little bit about how we should be carrying ourselves as Christian leaders. Praise God. Not only do they minister to churches, they also minister to Fortune 500 companies. Amen. And instilling godly leadership in these companies. So we're going to be talking with them. They're going to be coming on with us, uh, Dr. Dr. Nate Brooks, who also airs here on this this uh, radio station uh, on today, actually, at 6 o'clock p.m. Dr. Nate, Nate Brooks uh, will be with us uh, at 6, 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, health is wealth. He's going to tell you his journey. Uh, he's he's a a world renowned uh, at uh, at the same level that uh, 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 Miles Monroe, Amen. Uh, going from uh, company to company, nation to nation, and helping people with uh, leadership. And uh, he's a coach. He's a leadership coach, and also uh, a financial coach. So. He will be on. We're going to have him come on AM Coffee Talk, and he's going to be talking about leadership. Amen. And uh, he has books and tapes out there to and, and study guides to help the uh, companies, major companies, 500, Fortune 500 companies that he's worked with. And, uh, and uh, they just have him plastered everywhere. Well, he went through a, 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 a terrible bout with the stroke amen and just took everything from him but god has restored him amen they it wasn't they said he wasn't going to recover but god restored this man and he's on this journey to come back to uh do what he done 
you know, what he was doing before. But this time he says he has a different perspective on how he was going to, you know, do it. Uh, God has given him a new perspective. So that's good. Praise God. So we thank and praise God for him. Praise God. Would have been Miles, but of course, Miles has gone on home. Uh, also, uh, we, we in the in the very near future, we're going to have Gerald Albright. Uh, he'll, he'll be coming for those of you who know who Gerald Albright is. And then we're going to have a very various other uh, speakers from around the world that's going to be coming to AM Coffee Talk and and come into various programs within uh, interviews that we're going to be doing with them. Amen. So all of these people are on their way. Praise God. They're on the standby. They're waiting for the opportunity to come to Radio KBRG and express their love for God. And so we thank, thank God for that. Amen. Uh, uh, so we just ask you to continue to pray for Radio KBRG that God will continue to send laborers into the vineyard. So I've talked long enough, five minutes over, but I just wanted to just get that out there to you because I may not be able to do it on AM Coffee Talk because these brothers are already geared up to 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 uh, to say, Bishop, we got a word for you. <laughs> so I'm waiting on the word. I'm ready for the word. Amen. God bless y'all. You guys continue to pray for us. Okay. Amen. And uh, and uh, we just going to continue to pray for you. Keep prayer in the forefront of your mind. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.
over on in on our social media side because everyone's doing it. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, Facebook, good morning. Amen. Good morning to all the social sites. I don't want to go through all of them because it, it's going to take me a while. So, I want to say good morning to all social sites this morning that we are airing on. Uh, also, we're airing on uh, KBRG TV. Praise God. KBRG TV. We are there airing on that. We are not showing the photos and pictures of the, of the ministers right here and now. Uh, this morning, but uh, maybe later on we'll do that. Uh, but you'll hear our voices. You got the audio. You have the audio version of AM Coffee Talk, and you have our still picture out there that says AM Coffee Talk and uh, uh, AM Coffee Talk with the Brew Crew. Amen. And uh, you, that nice little, uh, that nice uh, pic that you see there was designed by uh, our our. Our little brother down in Texas, praise God, Pastor Newton, he designed that one. Amen. So we thank God for him. Praise God. So if you need any graphics done, amen, you need to hook, you need to give him a call. Amen. You need to give him a hit him up on Messenger, hit him up on his Facebook page. Praise God. And uh, TPV Newton, uh, uh, TPV Radio Network. I'm sorry. Amen. But it'll be, uh, uh, Contact him. Y'all know who he is. Every time you see me on my page. <laughs> so go ahead and hit him up. You need any graphics, t-shirts, cups, whatever you need, you know, uh, they can do it. They, they can perform it. Praise God. And they can give it to you. And you know what? It's anointed when it gets to your house. When it comes in the mail, it comes anointed. Amen. So they're going to pull Crisco over it and bless it. And then... <laughs> <laughs> they go give it to you, uh, so you go feel the power of God on all the merch that they send you. Amen. So we thank and praise God. Amen. He'll even do a praise break for you if you like. Amen. So uh, seriously though, uh, go to them to get your graphics done. That's where we go. Praise God. So we want you to go where we go. So you get the best graphics in the world. See that graphics behind him? Well, you can't see it. Uh, there's a graphics behind him. Praise God in his studio. Praise God that uh, uh, he designed. Amen. And we thank God for that. And uh, you'll see it. You've seen it on our website. You've seen it also on our, our Facebook sites and all of our social media sites. That's his design. Amen. Uh, their design, I can't say his design, their design, uh, their husband and wife team, praise God. Isn't it good that husband and wife can work together? Amen. It's good that husband and wife can work together without, you know, uh, you know, the drama. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I thank God for my wife. Uh, we can work together, you know. I create a lot of drama, but uh, my, <laughs> wife, <laughs> my wife knows how to, you know, uh, 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 you know, put that put that drama out, you know, so she get to rebuking, you know, the devil. So uh, I thank God for my wife for rebuking the devil in me. Amen. So hey, Bishop, ooh, Bishop said he got the devil in him. Oh, no, stop it. All right, you know, devil in me. But anyway, uh, you know, we can get devilish sometimes. We can do things we know we don't have no business doing. Yes, man. Yeah. And so, uh, Hold, hold, hold on a second, man, everybody. Let me, before, before I go any further, that's my wife in the background. And so, <laughs> so, <laughs> she didn't know she was on camera. Amen. So, uh, peace coffee. I got to do a quick commercial for peace coffee. Amen. They don't pay me for this. Amen. But I have a good, Big old giant mug of Pete's coffee. Pete's, thank you for waking me up this morning with your coffee. Amen. I might have the shakes and jitters all the rest of the day, but that's all right. Yeah. At least we can we can we can tribute that to Pete's. Amen. Pete's coffee, y'all. Amen. Well, uh, that's what that's what I drink on AM Coffee Talk. So those of you that want to drink the same kind of coffee I drink. Get Pete's. All right. 
pizzas found in you know, some of your local stores over in Vegas. We know there are pizzas in Vegas, right? So you can go to the local store in Vegas, and I think it's uh, Food for Less or uh, one of uh, Smiths. Smiths, okay, Smiths. Yeah, go to Smiths, y'all. Yeah, go to Smiths. Yeah, go to Smiths. Smiths. Yeah. Smiths. Yeah, Smith okay. Foods. Go over there and say Bishop Horn sent me to get this peace coffee. Amen. Bishop Horn and the Brew Crew sent us to come get this peace coffee. They don't have it in Texas, but they do have what they have in Texas. Uh, Eva- uh Evangelist Kirk, uh, <laughs> Pastor <laughs> Newton. <laughs> 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 what they have in I'm Texas? <laughs> well, I'm definitely not offended by that one. I, I love to uh, walk in the shoes of uh, the great Golden Voice himself, Evangelist Richard Kirk. Uh, I definitely am not offended by that by no means. Uh, I pray that I can live uh, as long and be as wise as that man of God right there. But we definitely uh, drink multiple uh, varieties of coffee, but I prefer uh h-e-b coffee uh because that was used to be where i worked and i love the fact that i can have it and drink it in my own home and i don't have to worry about too much uh, it's very good i think pete's has competition over here in no texas uh, because uh, I, I pretty much drink at least two or three cups of this because i'm i'm always burning the midnight or oil lately so uh yeah it comes in handy so heb coffee here in texas heb is a is a texas owned supermarket chain that's almost all over texas so you can get heb coffee anywhere in texas uh, except for the small rural areas but they're probably coming to your town very very soon mm. uh, so heb is the competition for of course we all know wally world so yeah. uh wally world has competition here in texas uh heb coffee so get some today yeah if you're in the ctx area or if you're in texas get some heb coffee it's a lot less money and it's very 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 good yeah, all right bishop yeah. i'm done with my plug back okay. to you heb coffee y'all uh the brew group is drinking Pete's and H-E-B Coffee. Well, that's not the only brand we drink around here. So one of these companies will have to go ahead and send us a little, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah little blessing. Amen. Because uh, our listeners are listening to this around the world. So you're going to have a bunch of people buying H-E-B Coffee. You know, you're going to have people in Australia talking about, I'm going to me some H-E-B and Pete's Coffee. Okay. But uh, in what does... Evangelist Richard Kirk Drake in Vegas. Now that's what we want to know. Uh, since I learned about Pete's Coffee and found out that it is Smith's, I'm going to be going to Smith's here pretty soon and getting me some Pete's Coffee, and it comes in all kind of flavors. Ah. And I love that. Well, I know you do. But they have. But right now, I'm into the Folgers. Uh oh, Folgers on the line, y'all. I go Folgers now. That's that's old school, old right? Old school, there, there boy. Work. That's right. It still works. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, and you know what? The blood still works too. <laughs> 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 he said Folger still work. No, the blood also still works. Amen. Praise God. We we <laughs> we thank God for for a event uh uh you call him evangelist now. Amen. We uh Pastor Fulbright, praise God. Pastor Fulbright, what you drink in him in California? I gotta be honest with you, I ain't drinking no coffee. Okay, that's all right. What I, do you I, drink? I got nothing nothing in my cup but water. Water. Okay. okay. You got water. That's what's, in my, that's what's in my cup. And all of y'all got water too. Y'all just got mixed it with something. Mm. <laughs> got that right. living water. Amen. Got that that's that's living right. water. Yeah. So, you know, just giving honor to the brew crew. Good to see you coming on, Bishop John. Yeah. You know, yes. uh, Pastor Newton is good to see you, brother. Absolutely. 
I, I want you to know, brother, you be missed when you're not here. Amen. Okay. You really know? are missed, brother. So, so, I'm not kidding. so it's good that we got to we got the brew crew this morning. Yeah. We, we got we got the events up there looking all clean. And <laughs> oh yeah. He look, yeah, man, he ain't looked like, that good like since Pep was a pup. Can y'all see that he don't have stress on him right now? Yeah, man, Please look at him. God. Thank Woo. you. Praise God. Glory to your name. God. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And then, yeah. and then I thank God for for the one who said he's the smallest of the group. <laughs> Mr. Jones, he was talking about how we were all the big ones. We're the big brothers. And he's a small one. We got his back. And that is true. Yeah. I, I praise God because the scripture say, "Am I my brother's keeper?" Yes, I am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So to, to that point, I'm looking forward to God just blessing this group, group to hear Amen. His word, Amen. And to say the things that that will give God the glory and the honor. Amen. In, in, in His love, there, Bishop yeah. Jones. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, you know. Amen. So, so I'm yeah. just I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. So, look, questions that are look, don't 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 get started, cause you know I you know I like to pick on Jones about love. Yeah, y'all, why y'all want to get to open up that blood gate again? You know I love to pick on Jones about love. <laughs> so, but anyway, but listen, we have Pastor, we have Bishop Jones over in Oakland. We want to find out what he drinks early in the morning. But before we, we he tells us, I'm gonna tell y'all a secret. I know. The Bible said, know them that labor among you. Well, I know Pastor Fulbright, and Pastor Fulbright drinks green tea. Praise God, he drinks green tea. So that's his that's his flavor. He drinks green tea. So I've told his secret. So y'all know now that Pastor Fulbright has, if you reach under his bed, you'll find some green tea. Amen. <laughs> Y'all, this man know me too well. He knows me too well. <laughs> yes, sir. And so, yeah, he knows it under the bed. That's where I said. Levi told me. Levi told me where your tea is. So, <laughs> so well, thank you, Levi, for revealing the secret. Amen. So, my 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 baby brother, you know, with the beard down in Oakland, California. Praise God. We we uh he's he's Bishop Jones, praise God. Now see, we're born on the same day, but different years. Okay, so the we're not twins. So I'm just I, I just came a little earlier than he did. So he's in <laughs> he's in Oakland, California. We're gonna find out what he's drinking this morning or what he does drink. Amen. He's into that health stuff, so you know, I'm still trying to get off the soda pop, y'all. You know, but he he he's on that on that health he on that health kick. Pat Bishop Jones, what you drink down there in Oakland, California? Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Bishop. Amen. Good morning, Amen. Pastor Fulbright. Amen. Good morning, <laughs> Evangelist Kirsch. Amen. Good morning. Good morning to you, Pastor New Ted. That's good. I'm not done yet. Okay. <laughs> Hey, good morning, amen, to our uh, listening audience, amen. I, I I enjoy me a nice hot cup of tea, amen. I got I got uh, two boxes of peach coffee, uh, oh, one going out to to uh, Pastor Newton, and one going out to Bishop Horn. And, uh, I got two fresh boxes too, amen. To send to my brothers, but I I enjoy. I can't do the uh, peach coffee. He give me the shakes, but I do some uh, tea. Yeah, amen. And I do some tea, and uh, I enjoy that. This yesterday, I picked up something from our food program. Uh huh. Uh, it it got beets and carrots and uh, orange. Uh huh. And, and it got uh, ginger in there. Hmm. And it got lime in there. Wow. And uh, you know, if everybody was scared to try it, I opened up one. We was at the food program. I opened up one. It didn't last seven minutes. Wow! Mm -hmm. I tasted it. And I said, "Oh, this stuff is good." Okay. Yeah. Everybody started running over there with their cups and filling it up bottles. 
What? And I opened up another box, and that box didn't last another seven minutes. And I said, wait a minute, hold on, let me grab me a couple of these boxes and put them in my car. Because these people... <laughs> they uh, take all your stuff. <laughs> they go straight up for all of you. Yeah. And then they had another flavor over there. And it has uh, kale, and apple, uh, it, it has green apples, kale, celery, uh, ginger. What I tell you, and and, uh, uh, and 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 lime in there. See, and both of them are good. I wish I could send y'all some. They probably won't last. What's uh, the name of it? It's the juice. Wait a minute, bitch. Now you gonna send some peace coffee to the bishop. Ain't gonna send some to <laughs> Pastor Newton. You mean to tell me I can't get some of that juice that you talk about? <laughs> I, I, I would, I would. You know, if I knew that it would last, I know would send you some. I have never. Brother, I'll be you, more than I happy have to never my address so that you can send. I would love to have that juice. I have never tasted nothing. Like this, wow! So you really? gotta take you gotta take a picture of that and then send it. Send yeah, it I'm, I'm gonna take a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. It got yeah. a little thing. You pull the thing out and stick it in this little hole, and and then it that it becomes like one of them little nozzles. Oh, okay. And, and, okay. and then you push the button and it release. Mm -hmm. Wow! I tell you, that's some good stuff. You can tell it's healthy because you can taste the ginger all yeah. in there. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's what we need. We need that. We need to share that with the world. Amen. Everybody where's, in the world needs to drink where's this it juice. From? Who's distributing it? I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to take a picture of it and I'm going to send it, the picture out to y'all because I wish I could send y'all some. But I got y'all a piece of coffee. I got a stack of piece of coffee <laughs> down there stacked up waiting to go out. Um, Who going to mail it? You so are. Bishop, me and Bishop, we celebrate my birthday on Sunday. Right. <laughs> Come on. I'm, 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 this coming Sunday is your birthday? Yeah, wait a yes, minute. Sir. You got Pastor Newton. He's going to be celebrating his birthday. To, is it today? Is it tomorrow? It's tomorrow. 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 Tomorrow? Yes. It's Pastor Newton is oh celebrating his birthday goodness, tomorrow. Number 22. He'll, yes, be, uh, he'll be 22 years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get that coffee out of here so this boy can get his before for his birthday and pass through you'll get to it just a little after your birthday. And I'm gonna yeah. try to get it out of here today. Okay. Uh, as I'll, I'll see you my breathe. address. Who's Yes sir. I don't think so. Who 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 uh who's uh um uh, what I'm getting ready to say. Uh, who's uh? Oh man, I said lost you my. You get your birthday, man. <laughs> yeah, <that night. laughs> See, I'm, I messed up. Okay. Yo, this is live. This is live. This is yo. live too. <laughs> this is live on the radio, and I messed up. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I, I was supposed to be asking a question, and I, I, it just slipped my that's mind just like that. Wow, you know, oh, that's funny. <laughs> that is don't make no sense. That just does not make any sense, you know. Uh, but anyway, you, 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 you know what the Lord told me yesterday? What's that? Uh, man of God, that the church door is not closed. Uh uh. Ooh. Right. We've been we've been looking at the wrong door. We've been looking at the building door. Right. Come on now. But, 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 but in Romans eleven twenty five, mm. the Bible says that until the fullness of the Gentiles come in, that God is keeping the door open. Okay. So God is still saving people. I just start sharing that with me. I start praising God. God is still saving people. Still, people still got a chance to come in. Yeah. That's right. And I am so excited about that. I just was uh, texting my sister and letting her know we've been looking at the wrong show. Yeah. <laughs> we talking about the building. God ain't even talking about the building. God is talking about, amen, the place where spirits are able to deal with him. Yeah. So, 
anyway, I, I want to say good morning, everybody. Those are tuned in. We are having fun here in, in in the studio. Praise God! Everything falling down and hit me in the head, and all we just having all kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, you know. God is so good. I I thank God for all of you. Uh, pa Pastor Fulbright, uh, and uh, uh, Pastor Newton, and Evangelist Richard Kirk, and Bishop Jones. You got the full rate, full crew in the house this morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to that to have the full crew in the house this morning, and uh, we're at we're broadcasting everywhere. So I just want to let you know we're broadcasting everywhere, and we want to say good morning to everyone on TPV Radio Network. Praise God. Good morning to you. Praise God. KHHG, the family there. Good morning to you, and also you know your station, your global stations. Praise God. KBRG. Praise God. We're the trifecta group. Praise God. Where did I get that from? I don't know. Amen. <laughs> the trifecta gospel group, radio media group. Praise God. So we're just sending a signal throughout the world. Amen. And for those of you that are on social medias that are listening to us this morning, good morning to all of you and that are watching our TV and said, when are you guys' pictures going to show up? It's not. <laughs> so you got to get the voice though you got to get our voices praise god yesterday and the day before that and the day before that and the day before that we've been talking about the kingdom amen praise god so i've been in i've been informed and instructed and advised by you know my older brother uh to to go in the depthness of and open up the kingdom on word for today Praise God. So word for today is going to be resurrected again. Praise God. Word for today is our Facebook page where we do a 30 minute inspirational and uh, devotional. And so we want you to tune in. We're going to give you the date and time that it's going to launch. Praise God. It's going to launch this this week, I believe. And so uh, so we don't have many days left. We also have another ministry that's coming on. Praise God. Uh, evangelist Tracy Smith is, is coming to the radio station. Praise God. You guys, some of you follow her on Facebook. Praise God. She's going to be here on Radio KBRG. Uh, we're, we're estimating it's going to be on the Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evenings. Praise God. So you, you don't want to miss this. Praise God. Woman of God's powerful anointed. Amen. So we want to thank God for her, for joining the KBRG family. Also, uh, we have in the wings, praise God, <clears throat> from Australia, praise God, we have an evangelist out of Australia that's going to be coming in with us uh, in the very near future. We're, we're, we're talking, but you know, the time frames are kind of different, praise God. So I guess there's something like 15 hours or 12 hours difference from us. So uh, the communication is, is, uh, it's sometimes kind of difficult, but she's uh, she's coming. Praise God. And uh, we thank and praise God for her. Praise God. We also looking at another young lady. Praise God. We, uh, from the AME church. Praise God. She's coming in and uh, Pastor Taylor, Joan. Amen. And Pastor Joan Taylor. I mean, did I say Taylor? Yeah. And so anyway, she's coming in. Praise God. So we thank and praise God for the men and women of God that is joining the family of KBRG. And we really appreciate you. And we just want to send that message out to you. Did you guys check out Pat, Dr. Anderson on last Sunday? Doctor, thank you. Good use is the name of this juice. Praise God. Uh, good use is the name right. of this juice. Good use. Good use. Uh, did you guys check out past Dr. Kenneth Anderson? He preached like a whirlwind came through his through that building. He's at the historical Williams Chapel Baptist Church in Oakland, California. And man, 
Sunday night, 9 o'clock p.m., he told the place up. Praise God. And we just want to say thank God for him. Praise God. But prior to him, another minister came on, on uh, uh, K Bridge. And I tell you, Dr. Bullen, Dr. Errol Bullen, preached like he lost his mind. These brothers are just, they, the coronavirus not affected them at all. Praise God. They are not affected at all by the coronavirus. These guys are going to church and they preaching. They are preaching. Praise God. Amen. And so uh, we thank God for him. He comes on at 630 every evening here on Radio KBRG on Sundays. Every 630 is on Sundays. Uh, Dr. Kenneth uh, Anderson comes on at 9 p.m. on Sunday evenings here on Radio KBRG. Praise God. And those two brothers uh, are awesome. Praise God. The historical Williams Chapel Baptist Church with the Dr. Kenneth uh, Anderson, and also the 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 Deliverance Baptist Church with Pastor Dr. Errol uh, Bullen. Praise God. And these men are awesome. Praise God. They are both awesome, and uh, they come back to back. So. Uh, check it out on Sunday evenings. If you know, if you're just sitting at home and you're saying, "I just want to hear some word," well, come on over and listen to the word here on KBRG www.radiokbrg.com. Okay, 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 okay. We are ready to go into a little discussion, but you know what? I'm gonna pass the baton this morning. Yeah, what? What do you want? What I, do I, you I, want? I don't know about, uh, Pastor Fuller never told you, but his mother is. Uh, Frida Mitchell, who is who she's you know she's a gospel she's a gospel artist. artist yeah Frida Mitchell yeah Frida is world renowned and uh Miss uh, Sister Mitchell if I say if I have to say it that way I must say it with respect she is world renowned gospel artist praise God in fact she's the reason why Australia is coming to Radio KBRG she's the reason why. Uh, uh, they have connections. She has, you know, connections with that ministry in Australia. And we thank God for her. She has been very, very instrumental in uh, uh, calling upon those ministries that she's sung and she's performed and, 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 and ministered at in those countries. So we thank and praise God for her. Praise God. And uh, uh, we just continue to be the bridge and the broadcasting network that the men and women of God can come on and say, you know what, we're gonna do. We we're free to preach the word. Amen. We don't we don't hold you in no chains and no binds. You know. We also thank God for the TPV radio network. Praise God. They come on here on this radio station. Amen. Now they pop up on Saturdays, so they come in here on the Saturday. Uh, here on Radio KBRG. So if you know, you want some ministry on Saturday, praise God, you can get the TPP Radio Network Ministries. They have several ministries that uh, air here on Saturday evenings. Around 4 o'clock my time. Praise God. No, it's not. It's 2 o'clock my time. Praise God. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's 2 o'clock on, on this radio station. Amen. Also, you have Inspire Radio. She's been popping up all during the day on Saturday, praise God, throughout and Sunday. And uh, that's, that's uh, Ari Howard, praise God. So listen in, praise God, the radio station. And also we have 24 hours a day, music, praise God, gospel music, Christian music uh, from all genre of gospel. Amen. So we thank you, praise God. I did that plug and that's enough right there. Uh, so you had you came to hear the brew crew here's a brew crew for those of you that may have questions that is a question out there gentlemen and i didn't give it to you and i think i think i'm gonna surprise you with it uh and see where it goes this may be a we need to come back to this type question but let me see if i can find it and i can give it to you from uh, one of our listeners, radio listening art or, or listeners, that they said here, "Good morning, Brew Crew. I would like for you to speak on tattoos. 
Okay. <laughs> you should see the expressions on some of their faces here. Okay. I would like for you to speak on tattoos. Uh, those that grew up in the church and still got them. Those that didn't grow up in the church but later came to God already tattooed. Is there a difference between... And then there's another question. Is there a difference between deceased parents and family tats compared to cartoons and dumb sayings uh, about cultural? T what about cultural tats like the Polynesians and the Filipinos? They got quite a few. They got a lot of questions, you know, to to this tattoo thing. Uh, so they want to know about tattoos, gentlemen. Now, if we want to deal with that tomorrow, that's fine. Or if you want to try to jump into it today, you know, we can. <laughs> okay, in the book of Leviticus, in the book of Leviticus, the 19th chapter, the 28th verse, the scripture said, You shall not make any mark cuttings in your flesh for the deer, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord God. And he goes on to talk about other things, prostitution and all this. Right. So these these marks that you're putting on your body. See, we got to go back to God said, "Don't be making no graven images of things in the heavens, in the in the earth, under the earth, the, you know, in the sea." We are doing some things that when we put these markets and stuff of owners, we got people who are fascinated with your mark, and therefore they want to know what it's all about. So that when you're explaining to somebody, it ain't got nothing to do with God. It got to do about you. You got to do about what you believe. So <clears throat> the true mark that we should be having upon us is a spiritual mark from Galatians, the sixth chapter, the 17th verse. Mm. They said, say, in fact, I only want to paraphrase to, to actually give you exactly what that verse said. Mm -hmm. uh, and here it is. It says, from his forth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Mm. So, so the marks that we have are spiritual marks. They're not of the flesh to where people will look at it and be fascinated by it and follow your belief for what it is that you think. Okay? Uh, now, and when I say spiritual... Now, I have shared, and I think I shared this with you, Bishop, that according to Romans, the 8th chapter, mm -hmm. verse 30, God makes this statement. He said, to them that are predestinated, he called. To them that he called, he justified. To them that he justified, he glorified. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, and yet I don't believe in tattoos, but spiritually, I took on a tattoo over my heart that says that I have been glorified by the Father. So, on our bodies, no, no, no. The mark that you should be having is a mark of Jesus Christ, and that got to be spiritual. So, let me ask you a question that you made that statement. So, people that come to Christ that already has tattoos, should they have them removed? Because, man, that's painful. No, no. You, you, once you don't repent, see, there's some things that we got to realize. And again, this is Galatians, that sixth chapter. Be not deceived. Whatever you done sow, that's what you're going to reap. Okay? And you can repent of what it is that you done sow, but you still got to endure the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so if you had marks on you that you didn't like, now if it's a small mark, yeah, maybe you can go get the small mark. But man, there's some people got up to their neck and got it on their face Ooh, and man. all up their arms and sleeve. Oh, no, brother. I believe that that would be torture <laughs> <laughs> for you to not be trying to get them removed. Yeah. So, no, because see, what it is, is that you should be not died in the flesh now. Uh -huh. mm. So those marks that you got before you came to Christ, they, 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 they are crucified with that flesh that is crucified. Now, so, just, so oh. don't, 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 don't worry about that. You oh. know you've been forgiven. Okay. You, you know, sometimes I believe 
uh, that we become the biggest hindrance uh, to relationship uh, between the individual and God because we don't even let them get saved before we start putting rules on them. Start telling them that they're going to hell for something that they did when they wasn't saved. You know, if we let people get a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit is real. Yes. And he, the, the Holy Spirit will direct you in what not to say and what to say. He'll direct you in what to wear and what not to wear. He'll direct you in where to go and where not to go. He'll direct you in what to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you know, a couple of weeks ago, somebody had some tattoos on at the food program. Mm -hmm. One of my pastor friends came through. And he condemned that person to hell. And they had just gave their life to God. And he was condemning them to hell. And I was like, man, no. So, 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 you know, let's, as men of God and women of God, let's not become uh, the go-between that, that, that stops relationship between God and the individual. So that's, if, if, if the person gets saved and they want to ask a question, amen, that's a beautiful thing. Amen. But, but but let them get saved first. Mm. Okay. Hey, Pastor Newton, or, or, in, Pastor. or in other words, he told us to catch the fish, but let the Lord clean the fish. Well, let there the Lord go. fry it too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Newton, what what's uh what's your what's your your take on this? Well, being that I'm uh in the middle with the with the tattoos of uh, even my generation and younger, uh, the boom of it has just been so tremendous. But um, when it comes to the things of God, um, a lot of times we do things um, that we find out later that wasn't, you know, wasn't of God. Now, I'm not the one that's going to condemn anybody for anything as far as tattoos is concerned, because it's, a lot of times people get tattoos for different reasons. And we have we have certain people that will get a tattoo to honor someone. We have cultural tattoos. Now, so we're going to condemn everybody to hell because they have cultural tattoos? Come on. So th this is what I'm saying. We Everyone has different uh cultures everybody yeah, has right. different things that they do so that doesn't mean they don't love jesus anymore or any less because their whole body's tatted up some cultures that's what they do so therefore that's what they do so we we are not in a position to judge we also know what the word of god says a lot of us get tattoos because me for one to be honest i have one tattoo only one and i got it and I knew I wasn't supposed to get it, but I said, I'm going to get it anyway, because I was turning 30 years old. So I got one. <laughs> I mean, that I mean, I'm going to keep it real. That's that's what it was. And I wasn't in the church like that. You know, I was doing my thing and all that stuff. So even though that doesn't exclude me, but at the same time, you know, I got it. OK, I got it. Whoop, 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 and it's no big deal. So I can't I can sit here. I can't sit here and say, you know what? Uh, Well. I'm, you need to cut your arm off because you got a tattoo or you got a sleeve. <laughs> you know, I know a brother that has a tat has a, a, a actual arm sleeve going all down, and he was getting it colored in, and it's halfway done because he said I stopped because when I started studying the Word of God and I understand what this meant, I stopped completing the whole sleeve. So you mean to tell me that brother's going to have to go and get that laser surgery off? I mean, if he gets the money to do it, then great. But that's painful in itself. Getting a tattoo is no show. So you get a tattoo, that's painful. So now I got to get it removed. And if I have a whole sleeve of a tattoo on my arm, that's a lot of that's a lot of pain right there. So like I said, either way, either way it goes, as long as we're honoring, honoring God, and our, have our own relationship with the Father and stop all this judgmental nonsense. This is why we're in this position we're in now. Well, you can't judge a man or a woman because they have tattoos. Come on, man. That's, we living in a different time. 
So even in the times of Jesus, I'm quite sure certain tribes that he went into, certain tribes had, you know, probably tattoos on the face or the hands or whatever. I mean, it doesn't specify that in scripture, but I mean, each generation is different. And as we go along and as we do things of God, we, we have to understand that there's a balance. So we have it's just like saying that, OK, all of you are, that drink and are alcoholics, you're going to hell. OK, it's this, that makes no sense. So getting a tattoo. Oh, I'm going to hell because I'm going. I got a tattoo. I'm going to hell because I drink. Oh, I'm going to hell because I sleep around. Oh, I'm going to hell because I smoke a little. Woo -woo. Come on, man. So. It's our it's our it's our place as leaders to educate, educate on it. Then you can put scripture and apply it and then we can go forward. Now, if they're still they gave their life to Christ. They doing their thing in the church. They doing their thing in ministry and they still getting tatted up and they already know that in the scripture, I'm not supposed to be getting tatted up, but I'm still going to get some tats anyway. Then that's something you and God going to have to deal with. That's on you. It's not my responsibility to say, oh, you're going to hell because you got another tattoo and you understand what you were supposed to be doing and you still got it. That's not my place. We're all we are all in charge of our own soul, period. It's, you know, having mentors and, and stuff like that is awesome. But we live in a time where mentors and mentees are getting less and less and the influence of, of men and women of God are getting less and less. So we have to understand at this point, we have to set not only a standard. Yeah, let's set a, set a standard of excellence. But at the same time, let's teach them. If we're not teaching people what it is, what it signifies and all this stuff, and then we're not getting feedback from them and say, well, I got this. If somebody said I got my tattoo because it's in my culture, then what? You're going to beat them upside the head with the word. I mean, I'm just saying. So that's just me. That's my take on it. So, Bishop, I'm done. Back to you. All of you guys with tattoos, you're going to hell. No, just <laughs> but no. You give your life to to, to Christ. Uh, you you've given your life over to Christ. A lot of people feel like uh, that they doing honor. Those that are in the faith feel as though that they're doing honor to Jesus by putting in the cross on their their body, having that tatted, uh, having Jesus's name tatted to their to their body. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Uh, we're going to start with Evangelist Kirk. What do you think about folks that are in the faith that comes to and that are, are knowledgeable of the fact that they know that we shouldn't be marking our bodies, but they're saying they're giving they're doing this in honor of our Lord? Evangelist Kirk, what do you think about that? He's thinking. Okay. <laughs> He's thinking. So, uh, uh, Pastor Fulbright? I think you muted there. Yeah, I was muted too. I'm talking about Kirk being muted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> again, in Exodus, this is part of the Ten Commandments. Mm. He said, Thou shalt not make make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I praise God for the cross. You know, we like to wear it because it represents that Jesus died on the cross for us. But I gotta say the people that still got Jesus on their cross. Jesus ain't on the cross no more, okay? But do we need these emblems to prove that we are who we are? Yeah. Our lifestyle, our lifestyle should be our market, okay? Our, 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 our lifestyle should be the image that should be portrayed, okay? Uh, I asked the question a long time ago. Can you be convicted of being God's child, being a Christian? without you going around all day saying hallelujah or praise the Lord or got a Bible up under your arm or got a cross all upon you to prove who you are? 
those markets don't mean nothing if your life don't do it. So once you really start seeing the true witness that you are as to who you belong to, then people will see that cross. They'll, they'll, they'll see that, that peace. They'll see that, that they'll see you and give God glory. That's what they'll do. So now, again, I totally agree with Pastor Newton. No, we're not here to condemn nobody. We're here to help them. We're here to help lift them up. We're here to the strong got to bear the infirmities of the weak. Okay? So that's where the teaching come along. That's where the, the teaching come along. And when we see a brother or see a sister in a fault, we don't go and spread that around. We go and we talk with them. Okay? And one of the first things that God done taught me is that I humble myself before them to say, can I ask you a question? That'll cause them to open up and say, yeah, sure. Elder, what you want to say? And then that's where I asked the Lord to bless me to be like Nathan was when he was with David. Let me say something that's going to cause them to trip and them to see it. And then I'm going to give God the glory. I'm not going to go around telling everybody how I got him to see this and how I did all that. No, because it ain't about me. It's about God getting the glory. Okay. And you'll find out that people appreciate you even more because they saw that you loved them. And the, the scripture says that love covers a multitude of sin. Right? We got the ability to say you're forgiven. Mm. Now, I know right there, that shocks some people. But you better go back and read Mark. You better read Mark, the second chapter. You better see what Jesus healed that man. The prayer you that the friends had lowered down. He told that man that his sins were forgiven. And because they mumbling complained, he said, which is easy to say, take up thy cross, thy bed, and walk, or thy sins be forgiven. So he said, so that you might know that the Son of Man has power to forgive sin. He said, take up your bed and walk. Okay. So we got to be walking in the right spirit. Okay. And when we walk in the right spirit, that's your image. Okay. An image of what? Holiness. That's the image. Amen. Amen. So, uh, would, would it be a, is that a sin? It, you said it's part of the commandments. So, would it be a sin for us to uh, engrave an image on our body? Okay. This, 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 this the oh, oh, Go ahead, Bishop. Go ahead. Bishop go ahead. I, I'm just going to say, if it's a sin, if wearing the cross is a sin, then you got to hold the denomination of a uh, whole that's right that's going to hell. Uh, we, you know, God, God, <laughs> they need God to repent, they need to repent. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, well, it, it, we, my job and your job, as, as we've been given the ministry of reconciliation, every true believer has that calling on their life. I know we divide it and we say this. My ministry is over here, and your ministry is over here. But God uses different tools, but it's all one ministry. And our ministry is to bring people back to God. Once I bring a person back to God, then I let God deal with that person. Now, if they want to ask me a question or something, I make myself available. And I answer that question based off of the word of God. But their relationship with God is between them. You know, we we not we not Catholic. People don't have to come to us and confess they sin, and, and uh, we tell them to do five Hail Mary and, and uh, uh, thirteen prayers, and, and then God forgive them. We we not with that. We you know, when a person repent, God forgive you, and. You begin to walk with God from that moment. And the Bible says, once I come to the knowledge of their end, then walk their end. So once I start, my knowledge start growing as it pertains to the truth, then I adjust my life to, to fit inside with the Bible. But we got people who said that they got to clean themselves up before they come to church. And it's our fault. I, I ain't got no clothes. Uh, I can't come to church. I, I, 
as soon as I get some clothes, I'm going to come to church. Oh, I got to stop smoking before I come to church. Oh, uh, I got to stop stealing before I come to church. Or oh, I got to get married before I come to church. And all these rules is because of us. We need to let that person get saved. Lead them to Christ. Let them get saved. Let them get good and saved. And then walk before them how we supposed to walk. Um, it's interesting you said that uh, give them the rules after they get saved. Uh, when we apply for a position on a job, we go through an orientation. We're given a handbook of instructions and rules and guidelines and things that we have to go by. And most people don't read that book because they're too excited about getting, getting the job. And then when you violate one of those rules, you're wondering why you're getting fired, you know, because you didn't read the book, you know, and, and I believe here in, in Christendom, there, uh -huh. there is a guidebook that should be taught and we should read. And God established laws, rules, guidelines that we must go by to be a believer. Okay. And if we we think that's non-essential, but it isn't, it's, it is essential that you know these, these rules and guidelines because if you step out of sync, God ain't going to hold it because your conscience, or I didn't know. No, you're still going to be judged for it because it's written. See? So we must have, understand something. When something is written and you become a part of it, you are held to that which is written, whether you're ignorant of it or not. So, hey man, can, can I jump in? Oh, can I jump in on that? Hold on, hold on, John. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, right. let me let me jump in. Okay. Let me jump in on that. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. <laughs> see, see, yeah. See, for what it is that we've been talking about for. Last week, whatever <laughs> we're talking about, kingdom, kingdom. Yeah. We're talking about one person making the decision mm -hmm. for all the people. Okay, so when we look at the Ten Commandments, that was something that God wrote with His own finger. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. and so if we are learning the precepts, okay. This verse starts off and said, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. And now he's trying to tell you what his rule is. Thou shall have no other gods before me. Right. Then he put another precept on it and said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images right. or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Wait a minute, he put another one. Thou shalt not bow down thyself, nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God and jealous. See, this right here, if we just gave them the Ten Commandments, quit interpreting what it says. Yeah. Let the word find the person where they at. That's right. Okay? And the spirit will convict them. Mm -hmm. They will start seeing that these images, and yes, Bishop Joe, yes, we, we got these crosses because they look all good and all that, but if I got to see a physical cross, then, then, then it must not be a spiritual one. Because your life should show a cross in your life. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 your, uh, the markings that God wants us to have is a spiritual marking, mm -hmm. not, a, not, not, not a physical one. Because people, people tend to, to, to be attracted to something shiny, something bling. That's why I really, as a pastor, no pastor should be up there with his hands all with gold rings all on his fingers and the, the Rolex watch on his arm. Uh -oh. Because the people are not now looking at Jesus, they're looking at you. They're looking at you. Wait a minute. And they're wanting to have what you have 
Wait a minute. When it comes to the physical thing. Hold on now, 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 now. Come on, you, come you, on. You better come on. stop. Because you come know on. what? You I'll, leave, yeah, you leave my <laughs> prosperous <laughs> preachers alone. Leave them alone. If they want to show their prosperity, if they want to show <laughs> what God has done for them, let them show it. Because that's it. That's Bring, all. Bring. Oh, I'm, 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 you won't come in. Notice, notice, notice what Pastor Fulbright said. Yeah, uh, they God could have given them the Ten Commandments while they were in Egypt. That's true. He, he could have, but but first thing he did was he got them out of Egypt. That's right. Uh, and out of bondage. Uh, yeah, out of bondage. Out of the bondage first. And and then he he built relationship with them. When he wanted to talk to them personally, they they got scared. They said, "Nah, Moses, you go ahead and talk to him. Be okay with that. Just tell us what he said, you know." But th those principles are still alive today. Oh yeah. When God brings us out of bondage, He wants to start a one on one relationship with us. Right. He wants to. If, if 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 you want the preacher to be a go between between you and God, that's fine. That's what the people did. Uh, uh, the is the the Hebrews did, but it's better if you let God talk to you. Mm. If you start letting God talk to you and build a relationship with you, because sometimes we funny, Bishop. Yeah. We'll watch you walk into an electric fence while we waving and telling you we love you yeah laughing we know that the fence is electric we know you're gonna get uh electrocuted when you touch that fence mm -hmm. we watch you walk all the way from your door to the fence right and we wave and tell you how much we love you knowing what's gonna happen to you yeah because we don't like you anyway yeah so but when, when 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 I got good and saved, the first thing God did with me was establish a relationship with me. Mm. He let me be able to distinguish. You wonder why God waking you up at three o'clock in the morning? Because ain't nobody else talking but him. You get a chance to know his voice. And when you get a chance to know God's voice, and when you get in crowds and other people are talking, You'll be able to say, well, that's not God. Uh -huh, <laughs> I uh -huh. know his voice. Uh -huh. Amen. So this let, nah, you, this let people get good to say. And, and, you know, yeah, I, I do agree when uh, when they raised Lazarus from the dead, mm -hmm. he came out with his grave clothes on. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, Jesus spoke to the people that were standing by. And he said, loose him and let him go. Mm-hmm. So that that's significant for the ministry that God has given us. Sometimes a person come out of the grave and they still got their grave clothes on. And God will say to us, you know, help him get them grave clothes off. Right. And if God tells us to do it, then we should be obliged. But sometimes God will get the grave clothes off himself. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Jesus was the only one that uh, that I know of whose grave clothes was taken off in the tomb. Hey! <laughs> Woo, glory! Jesus is the only one I know of whose grave clothes was removed in the tomb. Yeah. Everybody else, grave clothes was moved outside the tomb. But his was moved, removed inside the tomb because he said, grave can't hold me. Death hey, can't hold me. You know, I can have power over it. Praise So he is the resurrection and he is the life. So you know what? If he'd have stepped out and somebody had to unwrap him, he would have still been, you know, controlled by that which held him. But it didn't hold him. A grave couldn't hold him and the clothes he had on couldn't hold him bound because, you know, they wrapped him. Jesus was wrapped just like everybody else. His body was rather. 
and but his rappings stayed in the grave. His rappings and the hang, and the head rag that they had on his head stayed in the grave. And his body came up. Amen. And walked out. Amen. Amen. So hold on, brother, brother Fulbright. Let me get you. You got to unmute if you want to say something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Amen. Is that when we go to the book of Zechariah and we look at that third chapter, uh -huh. and it let it be known, starting at that first verse, he said, and he showed me Joshua, the uh -huh. high priest, uh -huh. standing before the angel of the Lord, uh -huh. and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Uh -huh. Verse 2, and the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, uh -huh. even the Lord that is chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? And verse 3 say, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garment and uh -huh. stood before the yeah. angel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Yes, sir. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquities to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with chains of raiment. So we also see here that the Lord will have your filthy garments to be taken right, off. Right. And now he will close you. And the reason why is That's because right. he has blessed you with grace as to forgiving you of your iniquities. Yeah. Amen. So he take mm. God cleans you up. You know, Come on. God himself will clean you up because, you know, you can't stand before him dirty anyway. He he's That's holy. Right. So your iniquities has to be clean, cleansed away in order for you to even stand in his presence, you know. But you notice that God was given a, a, a showing that how we how we are presented before him being holy. Prior to him cleaning us, we all prior to him cleaning us are are filthy. We all are. That's why the scripture said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But prior to him cleansing you, not afterwards, <laughs> you know, I don't know why people say we all sinners saved by grace. I, I, yeah, but af that's an afterthought. That was a before thought, but then afterwards you were redeemed. So you don't keep saying that. I don't know why they keep saying that. That's right. You know, you don't say that out after of, he out cleans of your mouth. you. Out of your mouth do you speak life or death? Yeah. Why would we say stuff mm -hmm. like that? That's some stupid stuff we be saying and, and you know, and, and trying to make it sound like it's it's is holy and it deep. came from the throne. Indeed. You know, I'm trying to be That's deep right. in the pulpit. Y'all say some stupid stuff in the pulpit. And cause you don't say, Hey, well, praise God, we're all sinners saved by grace. Oh, so Jesus didn't Jesus' blood didn't do nothing for you? All the body that's sitting, all the people that are sitting there and have confessed their sins, that uh, and they didn't even have to confess their sins. All they had to do was believe, because Jesus took that sin before they can even confess it. He took it on the cross. And another thing, y'all stop saying the sins of omission and commission. Stop saying that. We have been redeemed. So there are no sins of omission or commission. All sin has been placed on Christ. And the blood of Jesus is what God sees. It's you that have to believe in the Son. And when you believe in the Son, you free from sin. Wow. So stop it. Stop saying that kind of stuff in the pulpits because you're confusing people. People are never believed that they're saved. They'll never believe that they're free because you all keeping them in you keeping them in bondage. You never giving them a chance to be free. Because every time they're like, oh, you need to repent. Huh, them sins of commission and the what? So that makes that makes Jesus what he did void. It voids out whatever Christ did. That that mm. that's that's the damage that come from church holiness, Bishop. Yeah, 
Christ Christ came to show us what holiness looked like. He, he's a perfect reflection of God. And God told us to be holy for he is holy. And Christ shows us what that holiness looked like. But then we have a church holiness that makes us look better than the other person to us. Mm. And we put that church holiness in it. I pay tithes twice, you know, the two yeah. men went into the temple to pray. <laughs> One was a Pharisee, the other was a publican. Mm -hmm. the way he, he started talking about his holiness. He said, I fast twice a week. I pay my tithes. He said, yeah, I ain't even like this guy over here. That's that old church holiness. Yes. Oh, and church stuff. When we check out Matthew 7, and the Bible says, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, it, it, when, when the church responds to Christ and says, we didn't, didn't we prophesy in your name? Mm -hmm. We cast out demons in your mm -hmm. with, He said, that wasn't through relationship with me. Mm -mm. I never knew you. Right. So let's let's yield to the holiness of God. Let's look at what Christ came for. He came to save people. He came to love people. Every miracle Christ did was provoked by love. It, it, the, it, the miracle didn't lead love. Love led the miracle. Yeah. And if we get that, you know, we are, uh, those, all of us are married. Mm. Uh, and, and we know that if our wife call us, mm -hmm. we'll interrupt our date. Mm -hmm. We'll interrupt a meet. We could be in the meeting and we'll be like, I got to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Love interrupted that. Mm -hmm. Love is lead me to get out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to go. And so let's let love lead. We we got to even know the Bible say that faith working by love. Mm -hmm. You ain't got no gas in the vehicle. You ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And 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 listen, I I, I know we you know, I know we sometimes come pretty hard and raw, but you know, there's some things that we do in church, as Bishop Jones said, that is not Bible. We just came up with it. It's become. We become what we call churchified instead of <laughs> sanctified. We become churchified, mm -hmm. and we we be we, we be saying some crazy stuff in the pulpit, and 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 in in testimony service and all of that kind of stuff, you know. And 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 then when we pray, we be praying for God for Jesus to forgive us of sins that He already forgiven us for, you know. And I'm saying, why y'all keep doing that? Why you keep reminding yourself of your sins when Jesus said, I forgot them. I threw them in the sea of forgetfulness. I don't remember them no more. So why do you that's keep that's bringing that's it up? No dope. Yeah, you keep bringing it up. Go ahead, Brother Fulbright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you just said a whole lot. But uh, because what it what is showing us is to see as long as there's the conscience of sin in you, then you're not free. No. Then you're not free. You're not free. You're still in bondage. Yes, you're you still are. in bondage. Okay. And so therefore, God is saying that I delivered you from that bondage. So therefore, as Bishop Jones is saying, the relationship is this. Have no other God before me. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't be making no graven images. Don't be bound down. That's the relationship that God immediately established when you come out of bondage. Mm -hmm. Okay? We don't want to keep adding all this stuff. Okay? And let me tell you where the remembrance of sin comes. It don't necessarily be from what somebody said directly to you. Somebody can be talking about somebody who just got caught stealing. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they do is pop up in your mind. Oh, remember you was a thief? Oh, people knew that you used to be stealing from them and all that. Boy, they wouldn't want to have nothing to do with you. Right. That's a thought that came mm -hmm. in that you should be casting down yeah, because it exalts itself above the knowledge of God that God has washed you 
cleanse of your sin. So Come why on. are you letting thoughts enter into you that's what you used to do? Yeah. Wait a minute. Did you not crucify that man that you used to be? Preach, man, are you not a new creature <laughs> that's in Christ Jesus? Behold, all things have become, become new. new. I'm not a thief no more. I ain't a liar no more. I am the righteousness of Christ, and that's what's going to come out of my mouth. Look, let me say this right quick before y'all go forward. Let the me the things that are behind yeah. and reach forward to the things that are That's right. Let me say it this. Ain't those things that <laughs> oh, that's right. Let me mm -hmm. say this right quick. If you leaders are measuring your ministry based on how many folk come to the altar, then you ain't doing the job right. That's right. You see, because if I'm basing my ministry, look how many folk coming and repenting to God up here on the altar. Look how many folk. You know what? Though many folk should be living a free life. They, we should be telling them that you should be walking in freedom. You don't need to be up here. The only folk that's coming from the outside need to be coming up to the altar. Not the folk on the inside. Why? Because you've been freed. See? So why are you up here on this altar talking about, Lord, forgive me. I smoked a cigarette yesterday. God freed you from that. <laughs> God forgive me I lusted upon this woman God freed you from that mm -hmm. God forgive me I lied yesterday Well you shouldn't have lied God freed you from that But you don't have to keep coming up to the altar For that same thing over and over and over again Bishop Willie Horn <laughs> See Because if I freed yeah, you from Wait, wait, wait let me say this You start let, recognizing the one that always covered Every invitation the same person keep coming. Yeah. Uh, well, no, the, you haven't received it yet? We need to stop okay. that. We need to put that to a That's halt. That's what I'm saying. Uh, we, never, we never identify freedom. And that, mm -hmm. That's one of our biggest problems. Even when we deal in the worldly sense, we always talk about equality. We never talk about freedom. But the Bible says that the true freedom, it frees me. That's what the truth does. So yeah. how can I dwell? The, the Bible says that the church is the, the, the foundation and the pillar of the truth. So how can I dwell? I'm, and I'm not talking about, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about the building. Right. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the church of God mentioned in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Mm. The church of the living God. Mm -hmm. How can I dwell in the church of the living God, mm -hmm. which is which is the foundation and the pillar of the truth, mm -hmm. and still be in bondage? Uh, thank you. Listen, the when everybody that came to Jesus with issues walked away free, you never heard them repeat again that I have this issue. But why y'all keep coming to the altar for the same thing over and over again? If Christ delivered you and set you free and you asked him to do it and he did it, why you keep coming back? Because the pastor is coming back. The pastor I mean, is telling you that. The pastor <laughs> telling you that. You know, God, come on up to this altar. Uh, sister so-and-so, the Lord showed me in your life that you ain't living with. Hey, 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 shut up. Don't you say no junk like that. You're supposed to be speaking life into that person. Don't yep. you have them coming up to the altar for and, that? And, wait a minute. and if you do do that, you do that privately. Yes. Yeah. And your counsel yes. of that. That's not part of the ministry. That is not. Of you working the altar. No. Okay. I don't know where y'all get this altar call mess from and, and for embarrassing people and putting them on blast and all that old kind of stuff. You know, where y'all get that from? God, Jesus didn't even do that. Jesus never did that. Well, you know, Bishop, sometimes, too, that person who keep coming back, it's like they're trying to show people or prove to them that, look, I'm trying, but I know I keep messing up. I keep trying. And one of the things that I teach, you know, is to helping somebody, 
you got to throw that try out that's right of your life quit saying i'm trying, trying yeah. you either doing it or, or you're, you're not, not. That's if right. you're not then repent there's help for you that's romans the seventh chapter how do god help that wretched man by letting him be what in christ, christ jesus. jesus that's yeah. how that man be, no longer become a wretched man he become now the righteousness of christ because he's going to start walking in what the spirit and not in the flesh Amen. and as long as you're trying to get your flesh to do right but yet you ain't in contact with that spirit that flesh gonna win over you every time okay but well, a that, lot of stuff that, that we repent over is not even sin. That's <laughs> it, it, that, 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 we got to get to the truth of the matter. The church holiness is, is, is a lot of what people be repenting over. That's right. What, what the pastor and apostle say, what the bishop say, you know, they base it on what uh, the, the finger pointing that we from the pulpit yeah. do. You know, we point. I'm gonna look at uh, 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 Evangelist Kurt. The Lord revealed to me that you got some issues. Well, we all got issues, brother. You know, the yes, Lord sir. didn't have to reveal that to you. God ain't messy. We well, ain't messy like that. You know, if he, so, if you so, got so an that, issue, that is God's prophet, gonna come to tell you that you got issues. God's <laughs> gonna come to <laughs> you. God's gonna come to you first because mm -hmm. he, your spirit of Christ is in you. He's gonna communicate with you and you go know if, it if, if we really be honest when christ was in the place called gethsemane uh -huh. he showed that he had an issue right the bible says that he feared that's what the bible says uh but the victory was in his statement not as i will not as i will but thy will be done uh huh. So you 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 get victory over your issue by submitting to God, right. whatever His plan is. Right. It don't mean that you don't have no issue. It just means now you got victory over that issue. Yes. You got victory. See, and we need to teach victory. We not as, I think we get a we get a high and a kickoff of folk coming up to the altar that we can lay hands on them, blow on them, wave yeah, our handkerchief. We better than them. Yeah, you I'm better saying, preach, preach. I'm saying, man, what are you part. doing? Jesus didn't do all that that theatrics and all of that junk y'all doing right now. All he spoke. If they came to him, he dealt with it. If they didn't come to him, he didn't even bother with it. And he didn't push people down. No, oh, I'm sorry. he didn't bother with it. You know, if, if a lot of people follow Jesus that didn't even give their lives to Christ, a lot of them followed him and didn't even, you know, they would just follow him for whatever they can get from him. But here's the thing. Uh, uh, he didn't bother with them. He didn't mess with them. He left them alone. All he did is minister to them. That's what he did. He spoke the word and that was it. Those that needed to be dealt with, they either came close enough into his, uh, uh, you know, vicinity where he can say, oh, OK, let me deal with that. That I'll deal with. He didn't deal with everybody's stuff. He only dealt with the ones who really wanted it. And he didn't, yeah, he, didn't come he didn't have he didn't have nobody. Come up. He didn't call nobody out the audience. Come here, uh, brother, <laughs> brother, <laughs> brother Fulbright. The Lord yeah, speaking to me. Come here. Step up to this altar. If brother Fulbright didn't want to come to if he wanted to come to the altar, he would have done that already. But I don't need to call him to the altar to put him on blast. You know, I, 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 I don't have to do that. You y'all get that from Jesus didn't do that. Only time he called somebody out is when they were close enough to him where he knew that they needed something. He he knew their heart. He knew they wanted it, and so he would deal with that based on the 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 the, the, the issue at hand. He did not just pick issues out. They brought it to him. They God came told to me him. There's somebody in here. Oh Lord. Out of these three thousand people, there's somebody in here that struggled with edit. <laughs> hey, hey, you don't eat all day long, you gonna struggle with a headache. <laughs> Out of three thousand people, somebody struggled with headaches. I'm sure. Look, you probably got four or five people. 
you're going to have 50 or 60 people that got a headache because, first of all, they want, to hurt, want you to hurry up so they can go get something to eat. <laughs> so you hurry up with that. And y'all holding these long lines. I mean, long lines. Having people standing in line and they standing, their feet hurt, their head hurt, their body hurt. And you got them standing in line so that you can show off. Uh oh. See, I done lost a whole bunch of people right there. Boom! You, this you thing shot a whole bunch of folk right there. So you could show off. Don't you know they can get their healing sitting in their seat? If the Spirit of God want to heal, he'll heal. All they have to do is believe. They don't have to come to the altar to get it. They can get it right there in their seat. Catherine Kuhlman uh, uh, preached one time. I was watching a video of Catherine Kuhlman. People were getting healed in their seats. And they, the yeah. reason why they came to the altar because they was give, they were giving a testimony. I was sitting in the way in the back row. And God healed me of something. And I just had to come up here and tell the church, tell the church. God healed me where I was sitting. And she didn't have to do that all them theatrics and call, oh, it's somebody in the audience that have heart problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you can look like you, you, God, the only one that, the only one that got a that got a connection with God is the man that's sitting up in the pulpit, that's standing before the people. These, all these when people. When I got, touch you, oh. the Holy Spirit is going to take over your body. No, Jesus. Take all the out of your body. And I've, then we, 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 dip, you know, we uh, beckon to people to get behind that person. Yeah. And then we put our hand on them and. Give me some catchers. Give me some catchers. I don't need no catcher. I need you to sit in your seat and get what you need from God. If the word is powerful enough and the word is anointed enough, those that yes, are sir. sitting there are going to get healed. Trust me. You know, but all this theatrics, I know I'm, 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 I know I'm getting, making somebody mad and I'm, you know, that's I'm not okay. apologizing for it. Because you guys been doing this too long, and that's the why people don't want to come to church now, and that's why y'all can't get no more than two hundred people in a church now. You know, because y'all too busy running run around two, here. Two hundred, some of them can get fifty people. I know that's right, what? but you know, most Dude. people max out at two. You know, and so if if you if you wondering why you can't get the thousands, because you're doing it wrong. That they just look at it from that perspective. You too deep. You so spiritually, so, so spiritually high that you know, you ain't earthly good. You're not really focusing on the fact that it ain't about you. It's about Jesus. You say it's about Jesus, but you're still making it about you. How come you can't flow in the background? How come you got to always be in the forefront? If I'm, if God is in the house, everybody gets in the background. If God's in the house, but if God, if you the only one sounding off like a trumpet and everybody just looking at you, ooh, Apostle Willie, Bishop Willie, you know we love you, Bishop Willie. Ooh, the Lord just moves through you. I just see the anointing all over you. Oh, glory to God! Hey, knock it off, knock it off. It ain't about me. It's about God. I hope you see God. If you don't see God, then we just we just doing ex, uh, spiritual aerobics. That's all we doing. Aerobics. All right, everybody, get up, clap your hands. Okay, okay, everybody, sit down. Snap your neighbor, high five. Okay, everybody, let's sing this song. All right, let's do this over here. All right, everybody, let's do ring around the rosy and let's go around the church in seven times. And then we go. Uh, uh, why y'all got to do all that? Israel didn't do that. Israel did not go in the temple and walk around the temple seven times inside the church. They sat and they heard the word. That was it. Ah, oh, y'all don't want to get with me. Oh, Lord. Bishop is making me mad. Amen. That's all right. How about you getting mad? <laughs> Everybody gets mad. You know? But you get right. Y'all making this about you.
Y'all wear these fancy robes and fancy clothes and jewelry bling blinging and cross, big old giant cross too, boy. I mean, that cross so big, and I think Jesus bore it. <laughs> that was, I said, what in the world? What are you guys doing? Then you got these old head dresses. What y'all wearing that stuff for? Knock it off. Don't wear that. Hey, you're not Catholic. When y'all became Catholic priests? You didn't even go through the order. Y'all didn't even go through the school. If you're going to wear that stuff, go to school. Go find out what it really means. Uh oh. See? So, but y'all don't want to do that. Y'all going to in, in, engraft it within the body of Christ and say, this is what God said. God didn't say that. God don't care nope. about what you got on. He want, he's more concerned what's in you, not what's on the outside. Uh-oh. Okay. Let me shut up, y'all, because I got to go. It's 859. But I just want to say that it, it, it is this is some weird stuff y'all got going. I hope that this pandemic have helped you to under to understand how we should be carrying ourselves. We should be quiet. We should be be holy. We should be righteous. We should be the lights and the salt. So we're supposed to be seasoning the world, not casting them out. We're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be that city set on a hill that they, when they're in darkness, they can see a city lit up. And they say, oh, that's the way to go right there. See the light? But we don't do that no more. We're too busy showing off. Showing what we can, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna show to uh, Pastor Newton how 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 prosperous I am. Pastor wow. Newton, see my new helicopter. Pastor Newton, see my new Rolls Royce. Pastor oh, Newton, no. see my new hunt. See my new Harley. Pastor Newton, yeah. see my new mansion. Pastor Newton, see my new Gators. Pastor Newton, see my new suit. Mm -hmm. You see my new walk in the overflow. Oh yeah, I'm in the blessing. I'm ooh, I, 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 you know. Oh, you devil! Let me stop. I'm the Alexa. I'm, I'm gonna take this. Alexa. This conversation is gonna move over to word uh, <laughs> a word for today. We're gonna move it to word for today, and where I can get into the stuff that we that we need to be really be talking about. Uh, the the brew crew is gonna be hitting with it. Uh, TPV Radio Network is also going to be hitting on it. Amen. So y'all might as well get ready. Pat Bishop Jones going to be hitting on it on his Facebook page. We getting ready to just go ahead and say, before we come out this pandemic, we want to come out right. That's right. Amen. So when we come out this pandemic, we're going to come out right. And we're going to come out holy. And we're going to stop playing these games. We're going to stop putting on these functions where we looking like we the, we the gods and God don't even exist. We're going to stop that. Okay, we're going to knock That's it right. out. Okay, we're going to do it the way God want us to do it and not the way the church say do it. Okay? We're going to do it the way God says do it. We're going to do we're going to do kingdom work for now from this point on. No more church work, kingdom work. Amen. All right? So church work is fine. Church work is it sits in its own category. But kingdom work is more universal. Okay? So that people can really see the kingdom of God in us and they can see the king represented by us. Amen. May God Amen. bless you. Have a great, great, wonderful, prosperous day today. And we're going to see you on tomorrow. Amen. And uh, if the Lord, according to the Lord's will, we'll be here tomorrow. All right. God bless you.